Support for The Kyle Hyman Show comes from Notre Dame Federal Credit Union and listeners like you who donate to Redeemer Radio, your local Catholic radio station. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kyle Hyman. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining me here in the studio is one of our seminarians, Joe Nepper. Thanks for being here, Joe. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. So we are actually, the offices are closed today. We are not doing a show. We've got some great stuff, though, to play back later on today, but thought, let's start things off with a little bit of a celebration, have one of our good friends on, and uh, maybe reflect a little bit on Lent and Easter. And I'd love to hear like what was going on in the seminary for Lent, and then typically what happens during Easter at the seminary. Do you, do you really kind of beef that up in the seminary? Yeah, sure. So um, during Lent, we continue. We always have daily Mass and morning prayer and all that. So uh-huh. the normal routine during Lent, but certainly guys are taking on new prayer and fasting and almsgiving. The rec room's closed on Fridays during Lent. So okay. it's just a little more subdued, I uh-huh. suppose. But then for Easter, it gets really exciting, especially, you know, we have Easter Monday off as a travel day, but the rest of the week, uh, we have Mass at 4.30 in the afternoon instead of 7 a.m., uh, which is nice. Mm-hmm. But then we still have morning prayer at 7.15, but better than 6.45. So <laughs> the Lord rose from the dead, and we get to sleep in, so that's nice. <laughs> the floor I live on in the seminary, fourth floor, Deacon Dan Neeser of our diocese is the only deacon on the floor. So uh-huh. we have a fourth floor tradition of feast days and solemnities. We get donuts after okay. morning prayer. So Deacon Dan is going to have to provide donuts for us on those four days. But it's really nice. I mean, for, So for the whole Easter octave, uh, yeah. you get donuts. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. got to do it. Yeah, yeah, In yeah. years past, some of the deacons have tried to say, oh, we're going to pick one day. But Deacon <laughs> Dan, he's, he does it right. Tuesday, we'll have uh, Mass in Spanish with the seminary community. And that's always fun to have the Spanish Mass because Deacon Dan actually is the director of the Spanish Scuola. Um, so the Spanish really? school is pretty much essentially the Fort Wayne South Bend seminarians and one or two other guys. So, huh. How's your yeah. Spanish? Awful. Yeah? Yeah, I was in uh, Panama with the Diocese for World Youth Day. Right. And I didn't know any Spanish. <laughs> and I took Uber by myself a couple times. So I would try like and work on it a little uh-huh. bit. Much more confident when it was just me and an Uber driver versus when the other seminarians were around. But they told me I was the most improved by the end of the week. <laughs> So it was great. I would I would always tell him, you know, in Spanish, my Spanish is very bad. Uh-huh. Uh, How do you so, say it? Uh, I, would, I would hear your Spanish. I'm not going to do it. I'm Come not going to do it. Uh, <laughs> Mi hablo espanol muy malo. There you go. I'm right, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. But anyway, so the, one of the days we were there, I was uh, talking to this guy, and uh, he was from Venezuela um, and had moved to Panama, and he looked at me, and he I asked him if he knew English, and he said, my English is very bad. So I was very happy yeah. because he had used the phrase that I had been <laughs> using. And it turns out, I said I was from Indiana, and he said, I'm a Pacers fan. Oh, there and you go. So turns out that there are more than two Pacers fans in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the other one? That... Patrick, Father Patrick Cake. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> just the two of them. Yeah. But yeah, Easter's good. Uh-huh. We have uh, extraordinary form mass later in the week at the seminary. At the seminary? Yeah, so outside of that, just... Do you do that very often? Once a week. Um, And so by that, you mean it's in Latin? Yeah, that uh, people are able to go to if they would like Mm -hmm. to, but only once a year during Easter is the, like, required community mass. Okay. The extraordinary form. Interesting. So when we take a look at kind of our role as Catholics during Lent versus during Easter, obviously Lent, we're giving things up, we're sacrificing, we're giving alms, hopefully we're contributing to the community, you know, giving of our time, giving of our money. Feeling sad. Just feeling sad. <laughs> Spending maybe a little bit more time in prayer, being intentional about that prayer. How should we be feasting in Easter? Sure. I think that during Lent, we're really good at being intentional about growing in holiness. But the Lord Jesus didn't come and suffer and die on a cross so that we could work for 40 days a year to be holy. Uh Um, But he wants us to always be growing and holy. Um, But above all, he wants us to be free. Uh, So the feasting aspect of it, I think you should eat donuts a lot and Uh you should have ice cream and you should let the kids have whatever they want. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Sorry for all the parents whose kids just heard me (laughs) say that. But no, uh, within moderation, of course, but there, there should be... Our days of Easter should look different than the our normal days of the rest of our life, especially during the octave, because we want to show to the world that something is different. And I think in a particular way during Lent, 
all the prayer, fasting, and almsgiving is always oriented towards the interior life and removing sin from our lives. Mm. But we don't want to stop there. And Easter is a great time where we should be intentional about applying the gifts of the resurrection and the graces of the resurrection Mm -hmm. to our own particular lives. So in overcoming death, Jesus brought in life where there is death, light where there is darkness. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit and the Lord want to work with us to do that in our own lives. So really seeing the Easter season as a time to celebrate and do the things you enjoy and grow closer to the Lord, but also being intentional about looking where is there death and darkness in your own life and working to overcome that, you know, reconnecting Mm. with friends and family who you've fallen away from for whatever reason, any shame that remains in your life, taking the steps necessary to try and move beyond that. Because like, God of the universe can die on a cross and resurrect from the dead. There's not a whole lot in our own lives that can't be transformed. Yeah. Any highlights from past Easter's? I mean, highlights is always just spending time with people, friends, and family. I uh-huh. guess uh, a low light at the time, but a highlight <laughs> that we can look back on and laugh would uh-huh. have been the Easter vigil last year um, at my home parish, St. Vincent de Paul, Fort Wayne. Before the Easter vigil started, kind of looking at the weather, thinking, okay, we can get the Easter fire done Mm -hmm. before this rainstorm comes. So we get everybody out there. Father Dan's like, okay, like, let's let's get everyone out here before this rainstorm comes. And as soon as he says that, downpour comes. Uh So everybody's like, ah, we got to go. So everybody heads up towards the church. And he looks at me and he says, grab the fire, grab some of the fire. So I take the matchstick and I light it. Uh And it's windy and it's raining. We get halfway up, it goes out. Go back, light it, halfway up. Two or three just times. like one of those long Yeah, it's just like a long matchstick. Yeah. And there's a night a Columbus trying to help with an umbrella. I really appreciated that. But I look and I see... Did I he think have his sword with him? They were like, no, no sword. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it would have been helpful. <laughs> his cape or something. There are uh, yes. seven or eight of us seminarians. And I look and I'm getting covered in rain trying to get the fire. And I just see the other seminarians looking back at me, watching. And... Easter joy was gone. But then finally I look and I say, somebody give me a candle. So we take the little vigil candle, I light it, Uh and then we stand outside the door of the church and ended up lighting the Easter candle from a little baby candle that became our Easter fire for the year. Yeah. Um, And I was wet and I was ticked, but then everything was great (laughs) because by the end of the Easter vigil, you know, you hear like, Jesus Christ is, I can't believe I just sang on the radio, but it's like the resurrection still happened. So it's good. God is good. All the time. <laughs> I had a friend that used to say, like, if you were going on a road trip, he said, I hope you have car troubles. I'm like, why, why are you saying that? He said, because that makes for the best stories. Yeah. Like, if everything go. goes smoothly. Yeah, we wouldn't have remembered any particular have detail. Story. And it's every day it doesn't exist in isolation. There's a grace for each day to make us better for the future. So I'll uh, pray about it and let you know what the grace from that story was. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. All right. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Uh, Keep you in our prayers and all the seminarians. Encourage people to keep praying for you. Happy Easter to everybody. We've got some highlights from past Easter episodes coming up right here on the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. Hallelujah!